Good afternoon guys, welcome back. This is the GEST IDC and I am Gods, your commentator from Ghosty Gamers, bringing you all the live action here in the playoffs. We are nearing the end and nearing the end means we are getting some fantastic matches, some absolutely fantastic play and picks and whatnot. It is going to be Mineski up against Invasion Reds, both these teams coming off of a loss. Uh, this is the third place deciding match. Both these teams losing their semi-finals. We had Mineski losing to Badburn just then. Well, Pacific Badburn, I should say. And Invasion Red fell to Izone. So we're going to have Izone versus Badburn in the Grand Finals. That's going to be coming up following this match. But for now, we are going to have a third place deciding match. Our third Mineski match in a row, guys. I promise you it's not intended. But either way, I'm not complaining. And speaking of Mineski matches, we're going to be seeing a Bimboka. This is... A, a, well, I imagine. I, I don't see anyone else playing. It's normally Bimbo on the Invoker. Invoca, and uh, if you guys are watching yesterday up against Neolution, they actually destroyed the Neolution Fountain. And uh, Bimbo was like 27-4 and four at the end of that game. As uh, we're going to have this game coming underway soon. Your third place match. It is a absolutely... It's a bit of a rematch, I have to say. I mean, they did verse each other in the last GEST. Uh, they was in the group stage where Mineski actually lost to Invasion Red. It's a team Mineski have lost to before in the past. And we'll see if they can get some revenge here. Um, I wouldn't say quite a grudge match, but there's definitely a bit of a history between these two teams. They've had quite a few matchups together as we are going to see the picks unravel here. And some interesting picks at that. I mean, so far, Invasion Red banning out the Templar Assassin, Queen of Pain, two sort of trademark Filipino heroes, and Shadow Demon, the support hero that Mineski like to use, banned out as well. Whereas Mineski banned Darkseer Bat, two strong sideline solos, and the Lycan, almost a must ban, especially when you don't have that first pick. It looked like Invasion Red. Uh, yeah, Invasion Red did have that first pick, of course. And they went for the Naga Siren. So as a result, Mineski got the Earthshaker for Woot and a Windrunner. We'll see how they want to play and lane that, but that's definitely going to be an interesting setup. Well, not so much interesting from Mineski, interesting setup from Invasion Red. Mineski going pretty standard here. They'll have the Earthshaker support, Windrunner as a side lane solo, and they picked up the Invoker's third, who will be that solo mid. Uh, or at least, I imagine that's how they'll want to play this. As uh, we'll see, ES, and now a Witch Doctor. So there's another support. They've got great lockdown with the stun. They've got the cask as well as Fissure, and that can really set up some Sunstrike. We're going to see Invoker probably getting very active. Well, not so much active, very sort of involved in a passive way by not actually coming to the lanes, but just throwing those Sunstrikes from mid lane at towards the trial lane where the ES and Witch Doctor are. It may actually be at top lane. If they're expecting trial lane, if they're expecting the Invasion Red trial lane to be top, they'll probably go trial lane versus trial lane at top, because with the Sunstrike coming in, that can really make the difference. So it'll be. Having those Sunstrikes come in, having the... It's almost a fourth hero in that tri-lane in a 4v3 situation could make the difference. And Invasion Red have actually gone for a Chen as their fourth pick. Before that, they picked up Tidehunter as well as a Rubik. So one of those two heroes is going to be in a solo role. Um, it, it could be the Rubik. They could run Tide and Chen as the two supports here. Or alternatively, they could even see Tide being played as sort of a, as in a farming role or as a solo. That's something some of the Chinese teams have done. Run Tide as a solo mid. Although I don't really imagine we'll be seeing that here. As uh, dies for those of you saying, full screen, full screen, by the time the game starts, don't worry, you'll get your full screen. In fact, this ban and picks area is actually bigger than what it would be. It's Basically, I've taken the ban and picks things and enlarged it, and then just put it here. So it's actually bigger than what it would be if it was full screen. This is full screen. You've got a small thing in the corner. This is non-full screen, and this actual area is actually bigger. So, <laughs> I don't think you can actually complain about it uh, not being your proper full screen stream. Although, don't worry guys, we'll switch on over in just a second. As uh, this is going to be... Oh, there's your hard carry. They're going for a Lone Drew. They're going to have both Naga Siren and Lone Drew. This is a lot of pushing power, especially when you throw a Chen in there as well. They've got the Tide Ravage for the crowd control. And that's a scary-looking team fight. not to mention the amount of sort of early to mid-game pushing power. It's not going to be sort of the, the before level 6 pushes. I mean, they can do some with the Chen Creep as well as the Lone Druid Bear. But mostly, they'll try and get the mech up on Chen. They'll try and get some early-game items and levels. And then go for that push. As we'll see what Mineski want to get to try to deal with this. They've got the ES and the Witch Doctor. Probably want to get some kind of carry to finish off that trial lane. Uh, Slada is still in the pool. As uh, we will see what they want to get here instead. Uh, well, not so much instead, not instead of Slada, but uh, instead of what the heroes that have been banned, Ancient Apparition and DK were taken out here. They're running down this time a bit. 60 bonus seconds left, still a bit, but uh, they do need to think, how do they deal with this push? Do they get another AoE spamming hero? Maybe even see Invoker going for a Tornado MP build, although the Chaos Meter can always come if he goes for an Exalt build. Sure, you've got the early game Sunstrikes, but then mid-game, just get one point in the Wex, and you have the Sunstrikes at your disposal. So, either way, it is a useful 
hero to have against a push, regardless of what which build you do in fact go for. And uh, we are now going to see. There we go. It's a morphling. So this is. I mean, this is not a super early game hero. It's a hero who does need some farm. As we will switch on over now. Ooh. No need to panic, guys. And uh, there we go. Who is playing what? What are we going to see? Jay for the Maneski is going to be on the Invoker. We're going to have Owa playing the side lane solo, the winner. We've got Urshiga in the hands of CMW or Woot, the captain. We've got RR who actually did the picks this game. So, well, I say Woot is the captain. He normally does the picks and bans. Maybe they were just I mean, sitting together at LAN and Woot said, okay, pick, ban this. Let's do this and that. Although I imagine they do all discuss together. Either way, it was RR who did the picks and bans this game. He's playing the Witch Doctor, and then finally for this trial, we've got Nando on the Morphling. Over on the Invasion Red side, we see Tidehunter in the hands of Shen GG. That's their captain playing in a support role. We've got Ohio, the Rubik. It looks like he's going to be in a sort of semi-farming role, possibly as a solo here on the Rubik. We've got FZ, FZ on the Chen. We've got Lone Druid in the hands of Wu Yan. That's a player I don't really recognize. It looks like he's a new face into this Invasion Red squad. I think he played yesterday, but it's not... No Kelvin, I want to say. Yep, Kelvin is not actually here. Kelvin Tan, the normal Invasion Red play, is not playing this match. Apparently, he's taking a break or taking a rest. I remember Ohio telling me yesterday. Ohio is, uh, of course, the sort of solo slash carry player for Invasion Red. But they've got, yeah, this new player coming in for Kelvin, playing the well, the main carry, which will be this lone druid. Naga Saren at top lane looks to be maybe... Well, Snow is looks to be maybe playing as a solo up against the winner. That's not going to be an easy matchup here. We may see Chen rotating towards the top lane. Lone Druid going to be in a side lane. So in fact, Chen as well as Tide probably going to round off a trial lane at top. Rubik will be mid, and Lone Druid looks to be in this side lane solo, and there's nothing they can do to stop this Lone Druid pulling away this creep wave, being a complete and utter nuisance. That's going to somewhat disrupt Morphling's farm, not to mention... Uh, the sort of prevent Witch Doctor and ES from being too effective here. They can use this. No, they can't use the creep bullet. It's being blocked off, I believe. And oh, that's annoying. That's very, very annoying. As uh, we will be seeing Morphling just farming the tower. He's managed to do all right so far. Well, by all right, I mean he's actually hit the first creep. It's always a bit hard to last hit tower, which is why this tactic from a lone druid can be so annoying, can be so effective. Witch Doctor doing his best just to continuously harass the spirit bear, sort of make him pay for it somewhat. As there we go, lone druid now can get farm levels, all because of this very effective creep pull. Not to mention, Morphling says, hey guys, where's my creep wave at? I want to get this farm. And it will be Lone Druid contesting still. It's still not easy farm. It will still see some denies happening. But either way, he's getting XP and will be able to contest some of the farm at the bottom lane. Mid lane, you've got Rubik up against Invoker. Pretty even matchup, I'd have to say. Uh, Rubik probably going to have more sort of involvement with going for a fast bottom. Maybe able to get some runes. Maybe able to get some ganks going. And Invoker does have great lasting. He has gone for an Exalt build. Rubik, of course, can use that nuke. The, I think it's like a fa it's called Fade Bolt or something. I'm not. I don't know. The, someone in chat, tell me. Someone, guys in chat, tell me the name of his nuke. I think it's Fade Bolt or something. Something really obscure sounding. As there we go. Smoke early. Invasion red. Want to get involved? There's your telekinesis. He's going to get moved back towards the chain. Gush goes down. Can they get the Earth clap? Looks like they will only level three and invoke. He's got no escape. The nuke coming in from Rubik. They get the kill. It is Fade Bolt. Okay, I was right. I, I, it just sounds so weird. It sounds like it shouldn't actually be a skill name. It's the most retarded skill name I've ever heard. Like, come on, Ice Frog. Get your act together. Get your act together. You can do better than that. But First Blood goes Invasion Red's way. They've left Nagasaren alone at top. But the problem is, when that Chen and Tide were missing, Winner, look at this, still level 1, did not want to go near the creeps because they don't know where Chen and Tide are. For all Winner knows, they could have been smoked up or at least coming through the river going for a gank. In fact, that's what they tried to do early on. Then they decide, okay, this isn't working. Let's head mid. They get the kill the Invoker. They're shutting down Jay, and that's an important player and hero to shut down. You don't want Invoker getting too involved at those early levels. And for me, a big problem for Mineski is right now, they're not going trial inverse round. They're going to have 3v1, a trial inverse alone Druid at bottom lane, and they've got a winner up against a trial lane at top. Neither lane Invoker can get some Sunstrike kills because Lone Druid is going to be playing so defensive they won't be able to stun him at bottom lane. Maybe... Just maybe with the help of this Earthshaker long range fissure they can, but ultimately it's a very. If they can kill him, they won't need the Invoker. That's basically what I'm trying to get here. They don't need the Invoker to get kills on this lone Druid. Top lane, there's not going to be any chance to get any kills because it's just a solo win runner, so neither lane can really be helped by Invoker, which is where Trial lane versus Trial lane, that's where Invoker shines. If they put that Trial lane top against the Tide, as well as the Naga Siren, and maybe even the Chen, and look to sort of aggressively roam through Invasion Red's jungle, then Invoker can help out with those Sun Strikes. Anyways, we will see. Cast being bounced around. It looks like you're going to see an early push coming here. There's a bit of a double creep wave coming in at the moment. No sea trip as of yet. That's going to be coming in the next wave. And uh, in fact, this this range creep decides, let's go wander back. Let's go for a little wander. 
in that mid lane. Meanwhile, we will see Invoker level 4. Rubik up to level 4 as well. A bit, bit out leveling the Invoker with that early kill. He did immediately TP back in, make sure he was there. For those of you guys complaining about lag, as said every time I read it, Try refresh the stream or try change quality. Either go up the quality, lower the quality. Sometimes a higher quality is actually less laggy. And additionally, it is not something on my end. It is something on your end or Twitch TV's end. Not something I can, in fact, improve upon. As I'm going to quickly ban someone who I do see posting inappropriate links in the chat. You, sir, have earned yourself a ban. Not just a time ban, a full duration lifetime ban. There's Naga Siren, 23 CS, 11 to 9, great farm. And look at this Winrun, 1 CS, despite th the smoke gank mid, Winrun just not poking out in this lane, not able to get involved. And there we go, Rubik finds a DD rune, as it will be bottom lane. Mineski under pressure, they're trying to keep this lone druid as far away as possible, prevent him from leveling up. Vichy's just going to go down here, we may even see a waveform going in. They want this tier on tower. Mineski, no, they are not doing well at at top lane and mid lane they gave up that early first blood so they feel they've got to make up for it somewhere and it's going to be in this bottom lane not just outlaying the lone druid preventing him from farming and getting free farm more they want towers as well and it looks like they should be able to get that with this next creep wave coming in they've got the bassa ring on and now here comes the creep wave yes dead you don't want to take that neither does witch doctor gotta be careful and there we go we're going to see morphling try last hit the glyph is going to somewhat disrupt that makes it a bit harder and he will get that last hit. So Nando will get some nice early farm. We'll see what he wants to go for. He picks up the fast perseverance. Maybe just some treads though. Invoker going for bottle crow, even on Invoker. He doesn't seem to be using too much of that mana, so maybe just needs to start throwing some sun strikes. Well, especially the cold stamp is great for lane control. And here we go. Gank coming in at top lane. Is there a smoke? No, Chen just walking straight in. They've already dewatered. Earlier on, they dewatered that, if you guys don't remember or didn't notice. And Chen is going to poke on out. Not going to get this kill here. In fact, Winner is going to turn around and go on the aggressive here as it. Oh, that wasn't that wasn't meant to happen. There we go. That's a bit bad. Now we're lined up. Es Fisher goes down, and it looks like they're going to try trade towers. They lost their T1 bottom tower. They're trying to get this top tower. Es is coming. They take up the chain creep, and that chain creep is an important tool for creep skipping as well as just sort of punishing Mineski for any sort of overextension, like from the Es or the Windrunner, especially the Es. If you can get hit him with an Ursa clap, it's almost a guaranteed kill. As our bottom lane, Invoker, Chaos Meter, RR goes down, not enough damage onto the Rubik, and he's going to dodge a Sunstrike, he's trying to suicide to Roshan, he's not going to manage to do so, ASD, Nando, waving on through, he's got that Perseverance, a lot of damage coming from him, and it is a Chaos Meter build on the Invoker with the Exhort, I mean, he has the Sunstrike as well, not really looking at the Cold Snap, going for Exhort and Wex, we'll see Deafening Blast coming out as well, but man... Nando on the Morphling, a lot of farm going his way, not to mention that tower, seeing on 40 creepers in a tower, top lane, here we go, they've gone in on the Windrunner, Eos trying to keep him alive, is there another Gush, there's an Anchor Smash, that's going to actually chew through his mana, he probably wanted to use a Gush instead, Shockwave finds the Windrunner, that's Shockwave doing a lot of damage, Windrunner, the Fissure, Windrunner going into the trees, going to go down, and now Nagasaren pops asleep, is being sent back home by the Chen, even with the Maledict on, he's going to be okay, great combo, Chen and, wait, no, he died. He died at the Fountain of the Maledict. Oh. No, he died to Sunstrike! He died to Sunstrike! Mineski's chain! <laughs> he got Sunstrike at the Fountain! I thought it was the Maledict, but no! Bimbo on the Invoker, Sunstriking him. Oh. Wow. I'm, I actually missed that one, but no. <laughs> it wasn't the Maledict. I was about to say, I, I could not believe how much that Maledict did, but it was the Sunstrike. Following up... The Chen Holy Persuasion. That is some in sensational play from Bimbo. I've got to say, that is very per that is some great perception coming out from him. As we will see, a save coming out here from our Play Cyber Games referee slash tie streamer. He's doing the tie stream. If you guys are experiencing some problems, you're welcome to go try out that tie stream. It is over on Own TV, I believe. And uh, that is something that uh, is in, in Thai, so uh, if you don't speak Thai, well, probably not the best idea for you. Uh, but anyways, we'll have bottom lane. Morphin continuing to farm away. 47 creep kills at 7.5 minutes in. Nice farm, not to mention that tower kill we said earlier on. Top lane, you've got 38 on Naga Siren as well as the kill, but dying at that fountain there. That hurt. He's gone for early arcane boots as well. So not sort of the typical carry Naga Siren build you sometimes see where you go for the Vanguard into a Radiance. That's what the Filipinos like to do when playing as a carry. And uh, we are going to see 
Chen looking just to get some farm and levels. Trying to, he's well, no, yeah, he's only got one creep at the moment. He wants his centaur by the looks of things, as he's not killing it. He's just killing these little creeps to get that level five. And now he's level five. He's going to have that centaur as well. Maybe good look to finish off this top T1 tower. Mid lane, Sunstrike. Oh, misses the Rubik. Rubik can turn things around. Oh, Chaos Media coming in from Rubik, doing a lot of damage with a nuke as well. Ohio stealing the Chaos Media and getting a kill on the Earthshaker. What a play! And Invoker just sort of like. Whoa, what just happened? That's not meant to happen. That gank went completely horribly wrong, and Woot is the one who pays and suffers. Lone Druid finding some space to farm up in lane. Still only 12 CS, but still, any farm and levels is going to help him out a long way. As, oh man, Witch Doctor, Winran, both low. Well, Witch Winran, especially level 4. Witch Doctor's actually managed to get level 6 here. Doing alright level wise. And uh, Lone Druid pulling some creeps all the way down the river, finding any way to farm a bit safer where possible. And uh, this Rubik this is is playing well. I mean, he's up to level 8, 2 kills, 2 deaths as well. But uh, managing to have a bit of a grip on this mid lane, top lane. ES going to drop a Fisher. Chen coming in from the side. It looks like Nagasaren wants to make something happen. Is there an ensnare? Tide Hunter maybe going to see a Gush coming out in a second here. Only level 4, no Ravage for a while. And it looks like we're going to see just Shockwaves being cast out a couple of times. Yes, the Fisher I think is on cooldown. Tide and Chen running into the trees here, just trying to juke their way around. Witch Doctor comes in with a cast. Sunstrike takes out Chen. Not to mention Naga Siren, the Witch Doctor Ultimate, knocked him in enough damage, but it's still going away. Rubik going to go down. He pops the Chaos Mere. Tide Hunter taking a lot of damage. That's the Invoker who pops the Chaos Mere. Blood carnage everywhere. Only the Naga Siren left standing on the skirt side. And Invoker J. Bimbo wants to chase down Snow. Snow just trying to juke around the trees. The Courier gets vision. The Courier scouting him out. He's going to try TP. Is there a Deafening Blast? Anything. There's not. Is there going to be a Sunstrike at Fountain? Don't think... Oh, not going to land this time. He went for it, but it was not as spot on as his last one. The last one, I think, with Holy Persuasion. They always go right into the mill, but TPs, you can TP anywhere in this area. A lot harder to hit. But what... I, it, I'm getting confused in these team fights because I see a Chaos Meteor and I don't know if it's Invoker or Rubik. Half the time it's Rubik, the other half it's Invoker. That one there was mostly the Invoker doing damage. The previous ones had been Rubik, but oh man. What a, what a crazy team fight. Both teams losing three uh, three heroes on Minesky went down. I think four heroes on Invasion Red went down. But <laughs> blood guts spilled all over the place. Lone Druid, the, well, you know, lo, yeah, Lone Druid, no, Lone Druid wasn't there. So I think it was a three for three trade. With uh, TP out just in time. So yeah, it was 3-for-3 three three with Naga Siren eluding the Invoker. Witch Doctor up to level 8 now. That Witch Doctor, that ultimate just lasted so long, doing so much damage. Tore through the Rubik, not to mention almost got the kill on that Naga Siren. Just a few more seconds, or not, like less than even, just a half second extra would have got two or three more ticks. Would have been enough damage probably to get the Naga Siren taken out. As we will see Tide level 5 up on him. I wonder if he's going for the max up Anchor Smash or if he is leveling up the Gash. We'll have to wait and see. Next time he does use an Anchor Smash, we've got level 3 Null Field. So a lot of points being put in the increased magic resistance early on. Maybe not maxing out his Telekinesis skill. We'll see what build he is in fact. We'll, we'll see when he levels up maybe what he, what he skills. But I have a feeling he's only got 1 or 2 points in Telekinesis. He's stolen Fissure. That is, as far as... Early to mid-game skills go. Stealing Fissure is probably one of the best skills to steal. It's an AoE stun. It chews through a lot of mana, but the problem is ES can't use it much because he's got a limited mana pool, although he does have an energy booster. But a hero like Rubik, who's an intel hero with Arcane Boots bottle with, with Fissure, this is going to be somewhat devastating. And we're going to see Fissure... Oh, going to be seeing him get pulled back in. There's your Fissure to follow it up. Witch Doctor, though, fairly tanky. Full Magic Wand, not to mention this, this uh, urn. Now it looks like Rubik, did he switch on over? Did he steal the cask as well? The poison orb on the lone druid. It's slowing down Witch Doctor. Witch Doctor decides to fight it out. This pops the ultimate with this Maledict. Not going to be enough damage, I don't think. Although it could be a maxed out Maledict. It's going to do a lot of damage. I don't think it's going to be enough. We'll have to wait and see. Is there another tick? No, there's not. 100 HP just surviving his lone druid. And ES in the bottom jungle. In caught, gets caught out, but... Fissures going both ways. It looks like both Rubik as well as ES popping Fissures. ES finding an Invis rune, saving his life. I didn't actually see how that fight went down, but without this Invis rune, he would be dead right now. A player's forces are under now attack. Chen with Tidehunter and Naga Siren going to be marching onto this tier 1 tower. Vlad's is up. It's not even going to be at all a carry build for the Naga Siren. He's going for the Vlad's, going for the pushing power. Tidehunter gets caught out. Thanks to Chaos Media. That is not something you want to do at this point in the game. That Chaos Media does so much damage. Basically takes time down from full HP. Although, ES looks to be the new target now. He gets acquired. Gush 
well, title, title rape, title rip, I think it's called, title rip, followed up by a test of faith, takes him out, Chen now, level 6, does have that heal, could have maybe, actually does, looks like he did in fact use to try and help the tide, Fissure going down, and he's going to get telekinesis up in the air, is there a ghost walk, no there's not, he's going to go down, Deathling Blast gets stolen by Rubik, following up by a fade bolt, so much damage from those nukes, just so much aggression coming from both sides, and it's mostly Maneski who seem to be suffering at the moment, Invasion Red going to get a T1 tower out of this, they're looking for this Witch Doctor, they can pull him back with the telekinesis. It will help them greatly. Ahayo picks up a tower kill. We'll see what he wants to go for. Maybe go for that four stuff here. Just go for some additional mobility. Tied now. Level six. Is he going to look for this Morphling? Whoa. Morphling. 13 minute Lincoln Sphere. Wow. Holy crap. That is a fast Lincoln Sphere. As far as Lincoln Spheres goes, you don't get it much faster than 13 minutes. I think you can get maybe a, with the... With complete and utter free farm and getting a tower, getting a couple towers, like one tower yourself and your team maybe pushing some other towers, you can maybe get it 12 minutes, but much faster than that is simply not possible. As, oh, someone gets sniped. It looks like it's a Sunstrike, because Invoker was sitting at base there, so they sniped someone with the Sunstrike. It was Chen GG. That's going to be the Titan. I think he was sitting at top lane. Wave in, ES ultimate, so many creeps. That did a lot of damage, and now Naga Saren on the run. Are uh, they going to try to chase this down? Uh, Morphling is chasing. The sleep goes back in just to make sure they don't actually get the, all the chase they're after. And ES gonna drop. Oh! Max Rage Fissure! One more right click. Can Morphling get it? He's not fast enough though. Chen with all the persuasion sends him back. Oh! Snow goes down at base again. Jay has. <laughs> Bimbo on the Invoker. Wow. The second time this game. Both times Sanaga Siren, he has somehow managed to snipe him at Fountain with the Sun Strikes. This poor, poor Naga Siren just getting trolled. And now look at this Morphling. Caught up. Gonna try to wave his way out. He is low. He needs to start morphing the strength, but he is so low in HP. The test of faith coming in. Invasion Reds, FZ, FZ. Getting the kill on that one. Making sure of it. As we will see. Chen sending back Rubik. He is a bit low on mana, so just sort of to boost up his mana. It looks like he'll maybe pick up some item of his, which is going to be a four staff. Has he finished it off? It looks like, yes, he's got the complete four staff. Mid lane tied in a bit of trouble here. It looks like he's already popped the Ravage. Going to top down an Anchor Smash in Snare. Cancelled the Witch Doctor Ultimate, and that is absolutely essential. That Witch Doctor Ultimate is doing tearing damage through, but he's going to go down anyways. ES Fissure from the Lugan. The Maledict may have been enough anyways. They get the kill one for one at mid lane. As, oh man, Bimbo on the Invoker. This is just, I can see why teams just ban out, insta ban Invoker against Mineski because of how spot on he can be with that hero. Lone Druid, how is he farming? What is he in fact going for? 3.2k gold. It looks like he's just going straight relic, not worrying about boots, not worrying about anything else. Mid lane though, they, oh, Rubik, such an annoying hero. Finds Oa, takes him out. Down goes the Windrunner. Windrunner really not having a very good time this game. Seeing only on level 8 with Boots and a Magic Wand. Struggle City as Lone Druid. Not really struggling as much as he was earlier on. He has not died at all this game. That's the important thing. He's only got 40 CS. I mean, that's. I mean, you're looking at about, well, 3 creeps a minute. But just sort of just resilient. As there's a Deathling Blast. Chaos Media. Look at this Naga Siren with the Cold Snap as well. Is there going to be a Sunstrike TP coming? Ooh, is he going to go for it? No, it's too late. He's already healed up enough HP. He's not going to be able to do enough damage there, but that hurts. Look at that Invoker. And look at this Lone Druid. This great control over this bear. Great micro. He's just keeping tabs, knowing where their Invoker is, farming with his hero while Lone, his bear just keeps track of the Invoker as they are going to see top lane. Rubik forced to go on the back foot. Daptive Strike. Just a level 1 Daptive Strike. That does not do any damage. Bottom lane. Jay takes out Tide. What, in fact, did that damage? I don't know. Probably a Chaos Meteor. It has been the, the the common theme this game, although it doesn't look like there is any remnants of the Chaos Meteor there. Forces are under attack. Top lane, we have got Morphling. Still farming away. Seeing on 110 CS at just 17 minutes in the game. And as far as farm goes, it looks like he is leading the pack. You've got 70 on Naga Siren and Lone Druid only on 44. How many neutrals does he have? He's taking quite a few ancients. He's sitting on just 10 neutrals, but most of those, I think all of those are in fact ancients. So a fair good chunk of gold. About three, three, maybe even four sets of ancients that he's taken out. And there we go, in Snare at mid. Windrunner is the target. There's a second in Snare coming from the Dark Crawl. He's going to pop the Windrunner and look at the Gush with a Test of Faith doing so much damage. He's now on the run and one more in Snare or a Gush could finish him off. 
Test of Faith, maybe it's going to be waiting for the winner and to come back up. He's not going to run back towards Nagasar, and there's your ensnare. And I believe we'll see a title gush. Yes, there is. Snow gets the kill. E, yes. Uh-oh. Caught in no man's land. He needs to go on the run. He needs to drop a Fisher. He needs to do something. He's going to find a haste rune. Like the Invis rune. He always just getting lucky with these runes. He pulls an ultimate track. Keeps himself alive. The ensnare is there. He's got a Fisher though. Can he keep himself alive? Chaos meter coming in. They get the tide. E, yes. Woots still alive somehow. And Invoker in the middle of the fray gets taken out. The nuke damage is there. E, yes. Suicide to Roshan. Yes, he he does. Woots denies himself, but that is not a trade Maneski wanted. Losing the Invoker there. Sure, once again, they pick off the Tidehunter. It's a, <laughs> it's always this poor Tidehunter. Invasion Red, how many deaths on Tidehunter? He's got seven, seven, zero and seven on Tidehunter. It has not been a friendly game to be a, to be a sea fish man. He has just really been punished time and time again by this Invoker. He's tanked so many Chaos Meteors. It's... Oh, he's going to be charcoal black by the end of this game with all the meads he's been taking. And Lone Druid picks up the Aegis. That's his relic. He's now only 500 gold away from that Radiance as well. As we will see Morphling just getting pulled in at mid lane. Morphling, though, that's going to be the big concern here for Invasion Red. Can they beat this Morphling late game? Oh, that suggests they can. Look at how much damage the nuke from Chen with a Test of Faith. A max out Test of Faith by the looks of things. Followed up by the Rubik, the, uh, the Fade Bolt, doing so much damage. And now bottom lane, we have got Wu Yuan, the Invasion Reds new, I don't know, I mean, he's a new player in this team, I don't know what teams he's played for before, this is his only alias, I don't know anything about this player in fact, except he's currently playing the carry role for Invasion Red, and he's brought them this far in the GES, the IDC, they are playing for a third place match, and that is a great accomplishment. As we will see, TP is coming towards the mid lane. ES pops down Fissure. Ooh, Fissure gets stolen by Rubik. Rubik's going to be pretty happy with that. They're not going to catch up the ES, but either way, having the Fissure for the upcoming team fights, it is just such a key spell to have. And we'll see Fissure being fought with other Fissures. Who is going to be the best Earth mover of them all? And Earthshaker rotating towards the top lane. There is. ASD or Nando Farmway. What has he picked up there? It looks like he's bought something. It is going to be a Yasha, at least for now. Looks like it will be going for a Manta style. Oh, gets scattered out by some creeps here. Tied there as well. He may just want to wave out of this one. Gets instead. We'll see him wave immediately. The Fissure. ES actually blocks in Morphling. Not to mention a second Fissure coming in to stun the Morphling. Morphling taking so much damage. He's morphing the strength. It won't be enough. ES Woots signed the Death Pact. That Fissure block. It went from down here, blocking up the entire Morphling's path, and, well, not much you could do there. <laughs> poor, poor Morphling, got caught out, and Woots did not do much. Well, it wasn't, I can't really blame Woots for that. Woots, <laughs> Woots wasn't exactly to know that Morphling was about to be ganked. Speaking of gank, look at that nuke coming in. Instantly 30 HP, and still Rubik chasing. This is a dead winner. There's, uh, gonna get scouted out, and does have, oop, TP up, but no, there's a fade bolt down, she goes. Oh, man. And uh, elsewhere, we see Lone Druid picking up a kill. Bottom lane does have that Radiance now. Has some boots on his main hero. As we will see, ES. Just looking to hold the fort as much as possible at this bottom lane. Oof. Chen marching forward at mid. Rubik level 15 on him. He's going to have that level 3 ultimate soon, which will give him a longer duration and a shorter cooldown. He can just switch between enemy spells a little quicker and also have them for longer if he gets one he really likes. Like this Fissure. I mean, he might just be happy to, to not change Fissure. I mean, sure, you can get a big awesome ultimate, like an ES ulti, but ultimately, having Fissure is probably better than having an ES ultimate. I mean, as a fourth skill. I mean, imagine if ES did not have Fissure, but had... If ES's first skill was his ultimate, he would not be picked at all in competitive play. He is picked because of Fissure, not because of his ultimate. That needs... <laughs> that is something which a lot of players, especially pub players, don't quite understand. They think ES is all about getting Blink Ulsies off. No, ES's main skill, his most important skill, is Fissure. It is his best skill. It is better than his ultimate, Fissure. And that is why, as a Rubik, stealing Fissure is probably better than stealing Echo Slam. Speaking of that, we steals it once again, so that's going to renew the cooldown on it. As we will see, ES in a bit of trouble. Force, oop, not going to quite make his way through there. If he had managed to break through all those trees, that could have been a dead ES. Bottom lane, though, more towers going Invasion Red's way. Vanguard coming by the looks of things on Snow. Could just be a heart, in fact. He hasn't actually bought the pieces yet, so it's, it looks like we're just going to be seeing a heart. Just pure survivability, pure tankiness. Making himself as unkillable as possible as he's currently seeing on 2.7k gold. Replicate going to be at 
get taken here. What is Rubik going to go for? Seeing on 1600 gold at the moment. Here comes an ultimate orb. Could just be a Manta style for the Naga Siren with this ultimate orb. Actually, no, it's going to be... Actually, yeah. No, oh, no, no. Whose ultimate orb is that? Is it Rubik's? That is the question. Or are we going to see... I'm uh, not, not exactly sure. It looks like it, it will be Rubik. Okay, Rubik's going to be going for a Sheepstick. Possibly a Lincoln Sphere, but I imagine it's going to be a Sheepstick coming. Really, uh, something you want to have against a Morphling. Even a Morphling with that Lincoln Sphere. And now things not looking too good for Maneski. It's all up to Nando on the Morphling. He's got the Manta style coming soonish, but is it going to be soon enough? Not to mention this ES Blink Dagger. They really want that. They need that to get the position they need for the Fissures, as well as the Echo Slam, as well as just escaping and... Uh, Initiating in, they need that initiation. D warding coming, nice play from RR. That's what they need to do. Deny invasion red of as much vision as possible. And as far as item progression goes, Chen Mech point booster arcane boots. Tidehunter seeing on a hood, gonna be going for that pipe. Despite being food most of this game, he's picked up a kill. One and seven now. Lone Druid, the one being gagged at mid lane. He hasn't got the ages, but here we go. Four stuff out from Rubik. Rubik gonna pull in the ES. This looks like a dead ES. Pops the ultimate right away. The gush is there. Fissure from the Rubik. And there's your tied ulti. Jay in a bit of trouble. Can he pop the ghost walk in time? He's trying to change. He's been... Uh, was that cold, cold snap coming from Rubik even? I think Rubik actually cold snapped him. I'm not sure if I saw correctly there, but it looked like he did. Morphling just pushing away at top lane. Here comes Naga Siren. Naga Siren on 3k gold almost. Replicate going to come off the Naga Siren. Meanwhile, the mid push is going. As Tide it must almost have that pipe. How close is he? TP scroll coming out at the moment. Chen going to do some offensive warding. As Lone Druid with the Radiant sitting on 2k gold. And Cast going to find Rubik. Looks like there won't be too much follow up. They decide to back things off, at least for the moment here. Lone Druid. He's got this cloak, but he won't be going for the full pipe. It's going to be Tidehunter who wants to get that. I imagine we may just see a Hyperstone being picked up. Start building towards that Assault Crest, unless he wants to go for the Vlad here. Vlad's another nice aura item, but generally, it will be the Assault Crest. As uh, we will see him up to 2.1k gold. We'll see what he gets. There we go. Hyperstone it is. Tide just farming away in neutrals. He's got the max out Anchor Smash. He can tank a lot of damage. He's going to actually chew through all his mana and uh, try and finish off that pipe. Which he still does not have enough gold for, unfortunately. May even want some arcane boots here. Sure, it's late. Sure, you want to get those earlier on. But, uh, I mean, mana problems for a tide. You, you want to make sure you have enough mana to just spam gush. If you have to be worrying about how many gushes you can use in a fight to make sure you can ulti. Same goes for anchor smash. It costs 60 mana. You want to be able to spam that in a team fight. It's going to low cooldown. So having arcane boots on a tide will be useful. Although, it looks like he just wants to get the pipe up as fast as possible. He's got arcane boots on some of Oh, he's got Naga Siren as well as Chen, both with arcane boots. So as long as they're nearby and don't have it on cooldown, it should be fairly easy to uh, have the mana that he needs and there we go it is going to be a heart coming for naga siren so going for pure survivability and tankiness not even going for a man style or diffusal blade to push with just tanking the hell up and then we're going to see Man maneski maybe in a bit of trouble especially when invasion red go to push this top tier 2 tower the only out of tower left standing for maneski as invasion red may be able to once again defeat maneski it's been a bit of a curse maneski losing a couple times the mid lane Rubik takes out ES, ES not having the best of games here, Woots has been struggling, 2 and 6, no blink dagger, he was trying to farm it, single 1k gold, top lane carnage everywhere, there's your chaos means, it looks like it came from the Envy Invoker that one, but immediately Nagasaren pops to sleep, and it's just, I mean, healing up, still has 800 HP, they're gonna go on this Invoker, Invoker, nowhere to run, they'll be in ensnare if they need, Shackleshot goes in on Tide, Winrun just trying to win run the hell out of there, has that 4 stuff to escape with, but no mech up, not much survivability, and they turn that gank around at top lane, not to mention getting the kill on ES at mid lane. Wooch just having a bad day. His ES really struggled the previous game as well when they're up against the techies. I mean, he was like 0 and 10 or something that game. This game struggling as well, sitting on 3 and 4 and 5. I mean, not a terrible score. I'm sorry, that was the Witch Doctor. ES is 0. F Oh, we're, not, we're looking at the wrong here. 2, 6, and 5. So not the, not the worst, but it's one of those things where he has just been caught out a few too many times, trying to find that Blink Dagger, and just not oh, having the impact he needs. As elsewhere, we will see Lone Druid trying to get up that Assault Crest, sitting on 1,400 gold. He's got the Hyperstone up, may even have some of the pieces bought. We'll see just where he's at. In a second here, pipe recipe is there for the tide, and uh, with just 50 gold away from the Hedris, he's going to have that pipe up very, very soon. We may just see... Looks like Invasion Red want to wait for the Roshan respawn. They're not going to overcommit now to pushing to get the tier 3000 and racks. But once they have the Aegis, once they're more secure, they will go for that. But for now, they can look for pickoffs and look just to get, find some safe farm uh, in the neutrals. Even farm out their opponents and just deny that farm from them as they've got some nice vision here. This Observer will scout out this ES by the looks of things. As Lone Druid just going to do some location farming with the Spirit Bear who has the Radiance up. But that's actually a fake win run. 
Uh, it's just may, may actually get revealed here by the amount of damage he is in fact tanking up. Should be fairly obvious to the Scourge team that is in fact tank now. As Morphling is farming at top, probably going to replicate himself. There we go. He goes down bottom lane, taking this free farm. He's got Manta, he's got Lincoln, sitting on 1200 gold. He nearly, he still needs another big item though, I've got to say. Even with these two big items, he needs more. He needs to keep on farming. He needs to just find something, some way to get back in this. As uh, Maneski, uh, you've got to worry about their, their chances here. Belt of Giant Strength. Looks like we're going to see a Necrobook coming on over. That's going to be a slow and low level Necrobook. Witch Doctor had such a great start, was so high level at one point in the game, was level 8 when most of the solo heroes were only level 8 or level 9. Earn up with boots really fast, since then it's just picked up a Bracer and been warding non-stop, has picked up a couple deaths I imagine. Seeing on 3 and 4, that was like a 3 and 1 Witch Doctor, who was getting solo kills and whose ultimate was absolutely wrecking apart Invasion Red. Invasion Red, they're going to fight, uh oh, Ohio taking so much damage, unable to get his way out of there. The Shackle Shot followed up by the Deafening Blast and the Chaos Media. Nice little gank there, and that's what Maneski need. Pickoffs like that, especially on key heroes like the Rubik. Rubik is actually on an unstoppable streak. That's 500 gold going Maneski's way, not to mention a good chunk of XP. That is a very, very important kill for them to get, as here we go. TP is heading towards the mid lane. It looks like even with Rubik down, we may even see a buyback here. No, he's got no gold for a buyback. He's finished off a Sheep Stick. Wow, Rubik has a completed Sheep Stick. And uh, they're not going to have any buybacks coming, but it looks like they want to defend this. They could even go for a Naga Siren Ultimate to engage in with. Ensnare just going to find a fake ES. It's not actually real. It must have been just a Morphling Replicate. And Roshan going to respawn. Lone Druid at bottom lane taking a bit of damage. Has Where's your Spirit Bear? It looks like he can't resummon, at least not at the moment. Morphling still chasing. He really wants this. And it uh, looks like he's saving the Adaptive Strike. He can resummon it if it's not on cooldown. There's your Adaptive Strike. There's going to be Invoker looking to follow this up. Waves on into the trees. Can he TP out? He pops the Chen Hill as well. Keeping himself alive. There's your Fisher. They get the kill. Wu Yuan goes down. Nice little gank. Nice little pick up there for Maneski once again. Firstly, they get the pick up on Rubik. Now they find another hero, the Lone Druid. Lone Druid actually buying back. That is some cockiness i have to say more than anything but it looks like it's because they want to make a fight happen here they set it up perfectly the siren altar we're going to see a ravage land as well they go straight for the morphling test of faith with a title rip they insta kill nando and now winner on the run being blocked by his teammate es is there a lot of confusion going on here great ice wall from jay unable to avoid that one and now with that ice wall they're going to set up chaos me a deafening blast chen in all sorts of trouble goes down winner to make pay the price as tide hunter they will be a follow-up in Snare, and Winrun actually trying to juke them. Uh, not going to manage to do so by the looks of things. One more Gush will be the end of this Windrunner, as it looks like they should be able to get this kill here. There we go. Gush finds the kill. Two for two trade, though. Invoker managing to make something happen. Nope, make it three for two as ES goes down. The Radiance on the Lone Druid just kiting down the Earthshaker. Mid lane, though, Witch Doctor not actually taking part. Go for a T1 tower. You go, Witch Doctor. You go. They get the T1 tower. Witch Doctor not going to get the last hit. Actually giving more gold to his teammates as a result. Probably the smarter decision as far as that's concerned. As uh, we will see Lone Druid now level 16 on him. And Witch Doctor just doing some warding maybe in the enemy jungle here. I don't think they really need any enemy jungle wards. They haven't been all that aggressive. Could get one near this mid lane. I mean, even on this on this plateau, but I think just better off right here. Dead set in this middle lane. That's where they just need to get some vision of where Invasion Red are moving around the map. Because it's Invasion Red who are mo marching forward. They don't need wards in the enemy jungle here. It looks like we won't see. Actually, yeah, they've already... What am I talking about? Mineski have one right where I was talking about. Right there. Smack dev on that cliff. And that's pretty much a perfect placement. You don't need vision of runes at this point in the game. You just need to have that map control. Which award here? I mean, it gives such great vision to where... The, whenever Mineski come down mid... Or if they... See, see, if the creep waves here and Mineski are trying to use it as bait tank here... Well, they get great vision of that. They get vision going towards the river. They get... They know when Mineski come out of the neutrals. They know when they come from bottom. It's just a great central position to have a ward in. It's why those mid tier 1 towers are so important. Just, just having vision near the mid lane is very crucial in Dota. Just as a strate from a strategic point of view. Morphling now. That death on him at bottom lane really making him fall further and further behind. He's currently 1 and 3. Lincoln's Mansell sitting on 2.5k gold. We'll see what he wants to go for next. As it looks like Manessi have sent... Oh, sorry, not Manessi. Invasion Ray have sent a few heroes towards the top lane. As uh, ES is in fact... They actually know that was Manessi here. The ES is there. Drops a fission. Needs to be careful. I don't think that's the position he really wants to be in. As Lone Druid Chen marching towards mid lane. How close is this assault, Chris? It looks like we've still got a bit of a way to go. Lone Druid, not too much in his pockets, nothing on any of these circles. 
As uh, there is the career, just some observe what's on that as Nagasarin has picked up a Blade of Alacri. Will be going for what looks to be a Diffuser Blade. Could, of course, be a Manta style, but uh, he's already got some illusions to work with, which are fairly... I mean, Manta style wouldn't be bad because his illusions are so tanky because of this heart. They get such great HP. And uh, we're going to see Nagasarin find this. Yes, is he going to pop the ultimate? No, just... Yes, he will. Oh, that's a... Could just try a... Uh, do enough right click damage he wasn't going to do so pops the ultimate to make sure he can get this kill es has a blink though es will instantly blink out even with the tile get gosh hitting and yes is going to escape this wasting the nagasaran ultimate nice play from woots he had the blink dagger he got out in time Ooh, that was close now it does look like tide with a gem pipe and medallion even up the medallion, it does not get rid of the Lincolns on the Morphling anymore. It used to, but it's been changed so that you can no longer break Lincolns with the medallion. Although it will make just whoever they're focusing down a lot squishier, not to mention the synergy with the Gush will give, give them a lot of minus armor to work with and make heroes a lot squishier all around. As at the moment, bottom lane, they're marching on down. Chen, Tidehunter, and the Lone Druid. Lone Druid, there's your plate mail. Looks like he will have that Assault Crest flying up very soon. There's your recipe, just needs a chainmail, so just literally a couple hundred gold away from that. Mineski pr putting on pressure. I mean, the ES didn't go down, and they've got this Manta style. More things on 3.7k gold. I mean, this game, still far from over, guys. No matter what I've been seeing about Invasion Red playing well, Mineski still their options, even though they are making mistakes, playing a bit sloppy. This Invoker, I mean, four stuff, Acronym Scepter, Blink Dagger. The Morphling has got massive farm as well. The problem is, look at this Naga Siren. Look at that sleep. It's like a 60 second cord, and they set up a Tide Ravage. They're going to take out this Windrunner by the looks of things. Although it looks like Morphling should escape. Can they even get the Windrunner? TP out with a Windrunner. They're not going to get an Entangle. And both Tide Ravage and the Naga Siren sleep being used. But look at this. 40 seconds and Naga Siren Ultimate is back. That is just ridiculous how short that cooldown is on Naga Siren's Ultimate. And that is why it's a top pick, top ban. Simply because of that Ultimate. Such a great setup, and that was a unsuccessful gank. Oh, that is not your side of the map, FCFC. Chen caught in no man's land at bottom lane, gets picked off, gets taken out, giving Morphling more and more farm. Morphling up to 4k gold. If he wants to go for that ethereal blade, he is currently only about seven or 800 gold away from it, and that's going to give him a lot of killing potential. I mean, here's like this Rubik could just melt. Rubik has no survivability. I mean, Force Up is a nice little escape mechanism, but against a Shotgun Morph, if Morphling can just instant combo down a hero like this Rubik, that could be a great way for Mineski to start winning some teamfights. They've also got the Invoker just to give them a massive teamfight. Look at this! Ice Wall! He's using even the Tornado now. We'll see the EMP, just great skill use from Jay. Switching over to a Deafening Blast. He's got the max out ex sorry, Invoke with an Aghanim Scepter, and uh, you can see it there, using it to great effect, using so many of those skills, and this is going to be hard for Invasion Red against such a high level Invoker with an Aghanim Scepter, it's so hard to push, it's so hard to team fight, and we're going to see Manessi just look to control those team fights and just get Morphling more and more farm, they can have Necrobook coming on, Windrunner, Morphling, 4.6k gold, 600 gold away from Ethereal Blade, if that's what he wants to go for, they just pick off this Spirit, no, it gets resummoned, okay, not going to get the gold, or the XP for it. Lone Druid knowing it's going to lose it and have to resummon. Anyways, bottom lane. Morphling going in, looking for the Rubik, and that's what I mean. Rubik is so damn squishy, and that's without an Ethereal Blade. Imagine if we see an Ethereal Blade coming into play as well. That Rubik is just squishy as... And he just needs something to take himself up. There's just not much he can actually get as a Rubik. It's like... It's similar to, that's why team play him as a support. It's like you're a crystal main as a carry. What do you get to make yourself hard to kill? I mean, you can maybe get a BKB, but... It's just a hero that's sort of meant to be as a support utility. You can't give super amounts of farm because it's not like a Queen of Pain who has such great mobility around with Blink. Also, just Queen of Pain has some nice base strength, uh, some nice strength growth, and just general, general survivability. Rubik is just really squishy, which is why generally teams pick and play Rubik as a support. Initially, teams thought, okay, this is a great hero. Let's give him heaps of level and watch him dominate games. But then teams started to realize, well, he's a bit too squishy. He can just not hold up in the mid to late game. Sure, he can do a huge amount of damage, but he's just too much of a glass hand, too unreliable. And that may be what we see happen from Invasion Red, but for the moment, it is Invasion Red hunting down. They're going to try get Oa. Is the win run coming up soon? He's going to need it. We're going to see a test of faith coming out. The Radiance burn damage will be enough, and they get the kill. Mana burn going down, just sort of tickling away. It's just a level one by the looks of things. Yes, PP's out at top lane. Tide Ravage was up if he wanted to cancel that, but once again, we saw what happened last time when Naga Siren decided to use an ultimate to stop it. Well, there was a blink out. And now mid lane, the push is coming. They haven't got Tide with them. 
And uh, Morphing has a replica at the top. That's just going to be pesky more than anything. This time we'll probably want to join up mid lane. EMP with a with an ice wall. Going to just slow down this push as much as possible. In go the Naga Siren Illusion. Just going to chip away bit by bit at these towers. This cannot be healed back. So any damage they do, well, while as neg negligible as it looks, it will be permanent as Morphing. Top lane. Looking to go on this Rubik. What has he picked up? It isn't Eagles Long. He's got enough for the Ethereal Blade. Will it actually be an Ethereal Blade? He could always go for a Butterfly, of course. You have to consider that. They have to have to strike alone does massive damage. Oh, you do not want to morph that much to agility. He's, okay, there we go. He switches back says, okay, bad idea. Let's get some uh, strength back up. And he's going to TP home. We'll see if he picks up the shotgun or if he does go. There we go. Shotgun is up. And we're going to see Rubik start to melt now. Sunstrike not going to land on the Rubik. Looks like Rubik not getting too scared is following that one. He will continue to farm. There's no follow-up damage. ES in the bottom lane does have a Blink Dagger up. And this game, I've got to say, feeling very, very even at the moment. No, neither team really pulling away. Tied level 16, level 3 ultimate with a pipe. Arcane Boots has the gem up. Naga Siren, big farm. Heart, Diffusal Blade. The team fight, I mean, sure, I keep talking about this team fight with the Invoker with an Agony Obsession, but this is Naga Siren with a 60 second cooldown on an ultimate, which can set up Tide Ravages. Can just build your team fight around that. Make sure Rubik can be kept alive and positioned well. And Lone Druid. A b not the best late game carry though, that's the problem. Lone Druid does not, I mean, he's sort of the, the mid game carry of choice. I mean, he's great at pushing down those towers once you get that radiance, but he's not going to scale all that well the longer this game goes. And there we go, his Spirit Bear may actually get picked off here. He's being surrounded, he's being cold snapped, and uh, it, despite having massive movement speed, will be forced to get resummoned. And now we can see Invasion Raider. I think they finally decide, okay, this Morphling is getting out of control. We've got to push, but as, I mean, we talked about timing pushes and timing attacks in one of the previous games. This is not the best timing for Invasion Red. Morphling has just got this Ghost, sorry, this Ethereal Blade, and that means he can insta-kill heroes like Rubik. They wanted to push before that Ethereal Blade was up. They wanted to push a good two or three minutes ago. When they had that Assault Crest on Lone Druid, that's when they wanted to push. They had such a great team fight. They had the setup with the Naga Saren and Tide, but they didn't push, and now, as a result, Morphling has an Ethereal Blade. Maneski still in this game. Ooh, doesn't actually decide to use the shotgun there. I feel like he could have almost gone for this kill. Sure, there's the Null Field. The Null Field does negate a lot of this magic damage, as we're going to see, uh-oh, Morphling waving on after. He's got the shotgun. There we go. The Chen heal, not to mention this, ooh, is this, this aura helping keep the Rubik alive. Not to mention the pipe being popped by this time. Wave in the right click damage, though, is going to be a lot. Hex is being used. Morphling just chasing, chasing, chasing. Not enough. He's also got a lot of strength. But there we go. That adaptive strike. All those spells. Such low cooldown. I mean, none of these spells, not, nothing have a big cooldown. I mean, adaptive strike, waveform. You can just keep on using them every 10, 15 seconds. And they get the kill. Maneski's Nando. Helping Maneski stay in this game. And Witch Doctor, <laughs> Witch Doctor at bottom farming away. I don't know if that's worth even commenting on. Be better off going to maybe this Winra, but Winra as well. Struggle, struggle, struggle. Necrobook 2 only. This is 40 minutes in. Winra has absolutely nothing. and hasn't had much of an impact. 0 7 for Oa. 0 7 and 5. 2 8 and 8. ES with a blink and arcane. ES on 2k gold. We'll see maybe a 4 staff being picked up here. Could even just go for a ghost scepter, but 4 staff is useful against the lone druid. Anyways, Invoker though. 183 CS. Big farm on him. He is the one to look out for. He's actually taken over saying, Witch Doctor, what you doing? You do not farm Witch Doctor. And he is 11 and 6. Blink, Force Snuff, Aghanim Scepter. Probably, oh, it's Sheep Stick is a possibility. Could even go for some DPS here, I've got to say. They, they've got some carry potential already with the Morphin, but more DPS couldn't hurt. Could you even go for a BKB? BKB is probably the safest option here, I've got to say, for... Uh, the Invoker to go for, giving him that team fight. He's got great mobility with both Blink and Force stuff to set the Ice Walls and also to keep himself alive, but having a BKB means he can go right into the action and just not have to worry about the Naga Saren Ultimate, the Tide Ravage, all these spells he can just maneuver around. And although, with that said, if he gets ensnared while the Naga Saren Ultimate is on, he could get focused down and <laughs> without any escape mechanism. I think the BKB prevents Naga Saren Sleep from hitting you, so as a result, if he gets in, if he gets instead that will lock him down he can't actually move around he can force stuff but he can't act, actually no i don't know if you can force stuff or bkb i know dota dota 2 i don't think you can but we're not exactly sure of the dota 1 mechanics but either way it's something that could backfire on him if he did go bkb so maybe we'll just see him going for a sheep stick some kind of dps as uh, it is going to be another roshan going invasion red's way cheese and ages Ooh, that is going to hurt we'll see one of i mentioned lone druid me 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 probably just going to pick up the agency actually and then cheese will go somewhere else to... Ooh, where is it? Where's the cheese? Who stole my cheese? Chen. Pass that over, Chen. 
pass it over to Nagasaren or something. I don't even know. The problem is the Scourge team do not have great late game carry. They've got Lone Druid and Nagasaren. Nagasaren has some carry potential. Has gone for just a tanky build though. Looking just to stay in the front lines. Nag Lone Druid is a similar sort of thing where not just his build, but just at the hero in general. is sort of meant to just be a tanky frontline hero. I mean, where do you go from here? As if you want to go DPS, you could get something like a Mjolnir. Have that lightning attack. And uh, also the Mjolnir effect is great on tanky heroes. I mean, if Morphling's right clicking someone down, you pop them in Mjolnir and you're going to have so many lightning effects coming out. And ooh, Naga Saren gets uh, Ethereal followed up by Adaptive Strike. It looks like they want to make a play for this. I don't know if they can do this. He's already morphing to Strength. He can start morphing while sleeping. Apparently, during the Naga Saren ultimate, you can start morphing to Strength. He's going to go right back to Aji saying, well, that didn't really do too much, did it now? Invasion Raid. What, what were you playing with that one? I don't know. Either way. This is just so hard for Invasion Red to push. Look at this. Ice Wall just gets dropped. Tornado gets thrown. Invoker is level 20. This is just so hard to push. And Invasion Red, they need to pick off someone like this Invoker. Look at this. Blink Dagger, four stuff. So much survivability and mobility. Not to mention, he's going to have buyback. That's the one thing he wants to have at this point in the game. Forget getting a BKB. Forget anything. Just have buyback. And there we go, Tornado, EMP, followed by a Deafening Blast, just slowing down this push, but now this is what Invasion Red need to have been doing a good 10-15 minutes ago, chipping away at this tower. They're not going to get in one push, but two, three, maybe even four pushes, they'll slowly get this tower. Not to mention, you've got the Naga Siren ultimate, send people to sleep, pop the ultimate and... Well, you know, you can't focus down Raxus with the ultimate on, they got rid of that, it, it also makes buildings invulnerable, but either way, you can use it to win these fights, Wu Yan. Helps get the kill. FC, FC, taking out Oa. They're going to pop the sleep, but as said, you can't use it to focus on Raxes. Ty going to pop the Ravage, and it looks like they're going to get a few kills here. They get the Invoker. Going to see a buyback coming out immediately. Witch Doctor as well. Buybacks all over the place. Invoker needs to try and shotgun down someone, but with the mech, the pipe, all of these keeping these heroes alive. Rubik, he pops the cheese. He's the one with the cheese. ES, Blink, Ulti. No one is down yet for Invasion Red. Witch Doctor is not doing enough damage, and Invasion Red. Ohio picks up two, picks up three. He's got a triple kill. Invoker. Still seeing on full HP, drops an ice wall, but not enough damage. They lose the mid racks, and it's going to be Invasion Red swinging towards the bottom. That is the problem. This Naga Siren just too damn freaking tanky. This could be the end. But look what Morphling did at top. He took down the counter racks. This is Mineski. They knew they cannot stop the push here because of how tanky. Lone Druid and Naga Siren are both so damn freaking tanky. So they said, Morphling, go for the top racks. Trade Raxes and trade Raxes. He did. Oh, this game will go on. One Rax apiece and Mineski. It looks like they lost a terrible fight at mid and got racked, but no, they had the Morphling at top lane, making sure they got something in return. And we're going to see this game <laughs> go on. How much longer? Who knows? We may have to wait for another Roshan, although I think ages as well. Cheese got used by the, uh, by the, what's his name? By the Rubik, keeping himself alive. Did Lone Druid actually die twice? No, it was the Tide who died. Lone Druid's at bottom jungle. Okay. Lone Druid still is Aegis. As Chen, it looks like the, the Spirit Bay actually got taken out a couple times that fight. That's something he can't resummon, and that's no Radiance. No Radiance, no Assault Grace. He almost needs to switch, switch those items over to his main, main hero, because his main hero is the one that's a lot tankier than his Spirit Bay. His Spirit Bay can get focused down by Invoker. I mean, the winner on a right click ranged attack, not especially the Morphling. Of course, the Morphling. Morphling now has enough gold for a buyback. I don't think he fought back that fight. I think it was just the Invoker as well as the Witch Doctor who had to buy back there. And Morphin can just go suicide for another Rax. Trade Rax if they have to. And this is a, a big concern for Invasion Red. Whenever they go to push, Morphin's going to be there with the counter push looking to punish them for any decisions they may make like that. Chen has a Gemma. He's finished off an Aghanips, but that's not going to have much of an impact on this game. Sure, it's a low kill on Hula. He can pretty much spam it whenever his teammates are taking damage, not even in team fights if he wants to use it. But ultimately, it's not going to be an item that has a massive impact on this game. They just need ways to stop this Morphling counter push. And Chen has none. He's not a hero who's going to have to be involved with that. Butterfly coming for Naga Siren. I don't know if that's going to have massive impact. I mean, I don't know what Naga Siren can get at this point in the game. I mean, I guess by Butterfly is probably one of the biggest items you can go for. Unless you want to go for something insane like a Divine Rapier. Or uh, some really big DPS like a Dedalus. Or oh, sorry, I can't call it Dedalus. My Dota 2 lingo getting mixed up with my Dota 1 lingo. Oh, face meets palm once again. A Bariza, of course, that is the one. But look at this, Mineski. The split pushes on despite losing their mid racks. It's Mineski who are putting on more pressure than their opponents. They've got heroes at top, heroes at mid. Morphling looking to try and sneak on through. Morphling finishing off a butterfly. And his pushing potential is going to be absolutely crazy. There's your shotgun. 
coming out on Rubik. He doesn't actually get the kill, but it doesn't matter. Shenji G, though, does get the kill on Woot. But just chipping away at this Rubik, forcing him to just constantly have to worry. And there we're going to see... Oh! Morphling I could actually just turn around and just say, screw you. Kill the Rubik. The problem is, look at this. Chen heals just any time... The shotgun goes on the Rubik, Chen pops the heal, because it's got such a short cooldown, it's worth doing that. Invoker, in the trees, TP's out. Morphing, once again, going in, forces more TP's, he's just forcing Invasion Red Sand, forcing them to come back, being the puppeteer. We'll have to wait and see if the puppets can break loose of their strings, can they fight back, can they revolt? It's what they're going to need here at the moment, but right now it's Maneski who seem to be the ones controlling this game, despite not being that far ahead, and if anything, they're behind, but... They're the ones with slightly more control because of this aggressive nature of their lineup and of this split push coming out. This is still going either way, I've got to say. Some people say Hal Halpern on Nagasaren. I don't think we're seeing Halpern on Nagasaren. Nagasaren needs to get carry items. You cannot get a Heaven's Halpern on Nagasaren at this point in the game. You need carry items. Seeing on 4k gold, you need DPS. You don't want to fill up. You've already got a Vlad's. You've got a Diffusal Blade Arcane Boots. You want big items. We're going to see a Butterfly. We're going to see these boots being exchanged for probably some boots to travel soon. As there we go. Just... Very low low damage shotgun coming onto the Naga Siren there. And these heals from Chen just being spammed off. So even though, I mean, Morphling, he's just using that Ethereal Blade plus Adaptive Strike combo just to harass. I mean, he can't, he can't actually get kills on anyone. Not to mention this aura from the Rubik reducing all that mag magic damage. Increased magic resistance really helping against this Morphling. But ultimately, just a harass is coming out from Morphling, but it gets negated by a Chen heal. Everything Maneski are doing is just getting countered in some way. As there we go, more harass. This time it's Tide. Tide is actually here who does take a lot of damage. That's followed in by a wave and some right clicks. That's a dead Tide. Although Morphling does not want to risk that. Unless he's got a replicate he can escape to, which he doesn't at the moment. As it looks like Lone Druid going on the Prowl. What has he picked up? He's got another Relic. He's going for a Divine Rapier. Is there an Entangle? Ooh, two right clicks. Neither of those right clicks did get the Entangle. Could have gone another way. As there we go. Chen popping an ultimate just to heal up one hero. Just to heal up the tide. They've got plenty of mana with all those arcane boots. And it's going to be back on cooldown. I think it's a 20 second cooldown. Or is it 30 seconds? No, 30 second cooldown. Oh, look at this. This is smart from Maneski. They're smoked up. Someone is going to TP top to defend this lane. Or if not, they just... just well, no, they can't get mid. They can't go on mid. There's a tier 2 tower up. Is there a replicate here? Is there something... Oh, the replicate's at mid. If that replicate was... If that replicate was somewhere else, we could have seen some serious pressure coming in with Morphing going in. Morphing may even try back to all this bottom lane. The, the replicate's going towards bottom. We're going to see Morphing head towards bottom lane while Invoker pressures this mid lane. Uh, the fight is going in mid. Morphing in a bit of trouble. He needs to replicate out. He does so. He's at bottom. Is his manager up? It's going to be up in a second. There's no defense at bottom. He is going in for this Rax. We'll keep an eye on that elsewhere as mid. The team fight seems to be over. No one has actually gone down. And that means Morphling getting a free tower at least forces a glyph in back. He's going to have to get out very, very soon. More waves into some trees. Happy with just a tower because he knows back is going to be coming. The entire Invasion Red team in Boca <laughs> luring around. And as said, this is really Maneski. Being the puppeteers, Invasion Red are just getting maneuvered around, even with this middle Rax. It, well, it's not even a, a Rax advantage. Both teams with a Rax at this point. And it looks like Invoker may go down. He's got the 4-star up. He's going to have to try and use that. He's been entangled. A lot of damage coming out. Invoker has a buyback, though. He may just want to use that. Because you can see, Maneski, their game plan is a rel relying on continuous pressure. Continually pushing out all three lanes. Looking for those opportunities to backdoor, like we just saw there. Coming out from the Morphling. As, hold on a sec, guys, as I readjust my stream. There we go. All fixed. But buy back, yeah, just immediately do that. They do have to play a bit safe now. They don't want to lose Invoker again. Otherwise, it could create an opportunity for Invasion Red to push on through. But as long as Morphling is split pushing, they should be okay. Morphling has buyback. He can afford to be aggressive. He can afford to just go all out. Suicide for that Rax. And here we go. Nagasaren just sending illusion towards the bottom lane. He's got the butterfly up. But Nagasaren is not a hero who's going to do massive late game carrying the DPS potential. Maybe with the Barizer. Although the main thing he's doing is just tanking up. Look at how, look at how much Morphling struggles with just illusions. He misses, and they are just so damn tanky with 3k HP. He takes a good 10-15 hits on each one of those. Not to mention, those are the actual, actual hits that actually land. Lone Druid needs to be careful. He's got an Aegis. He's got enough for a Divine Rapier here. We'll see if he actually buys one soon. He may actually lose his Aegis. Chen Heal gets popped. Focus Fire going down. It looks like Lone Druid will be fine, because Morphling has decided to go waving in elsewhere. He's going to find the Chen here. Chen taking so much damage. <laughs> the, the Ethereal Blade on cooldown, but the Adaptive Strike. Ooh, Chen, 90 HP. With the mech as well as the hand of God being used a bit earlier, keeping himself alive. Wave in.
down she goes and the creep wave is in at top this means morphling can go for the bottom racks is the man still up it is on cooldown but morphling does not give a damn he is just going to get this racks the glyph is on cooldown in comes the lone druid it looks like this is going to be a bottom racks there's your shotgun he takes out the lone druid lone druid the aegis was gone it just expired he just lost his aegis and as a result he does not respawn and we will see both bottom racks is going down morphling in trouble here he's being chained stunned he will get focused down but looks like no replica down just in time what a play nando keeping mineski in this game and putting them ahead not just keeping them alive mineski somehow managing to, to uh, i guess this is a come i don't know can, can we call this a comeback i'm gonna call this a comeback earlier on they were definitely behind I mean, Invasion, but at the same time, when Invasion Red took mid-racks, it was the exact same time Morphling took top-racks, so they were never behind in terms of Raxes. They were behind in terms of farm, they were behind in terms of Roshans, but they never really were in a position where they were going to flat-out lose because of this split-push. And Maneski Busian indeed. <laughs> for all you for Maneski fans, <laughs> this is, uh, yeah. To... <laughs> They, they are just somehow saying in this game, Claw and Tooth, they are fighting. I don't know. Nando is absolutely the one to look out for as he is keeping them in this game. He is the one. He is just in the right place at the right time with the split pushes. For those of you guys just tuning in, this is your loser, lose, not loser bracket, this is your consolation file. This is for third place. Third place gets some prize money, also gets some bragging, rackets, bragging rights, of course. And look at this. No... Regen coming. These this, this is just illusions. They took down about half the HP of a tower here. Woots get Woots. Woots, what are you doing, man? You don't want to stand there. And the pro <laughs> The Ethereal Blade actually makes Chen Heal do more more heals because he's Ethereal form. You heal extra. And Invoker. Pops the ghost walk. Is there sentries? Is there a gem? Surely. 53 minutes in, you're not going to let an Invoker escape with Ghostwalk. Nope, they've got the gem on tight, and there we go. Four stuff out, can he get away? Tornado being popped, Diffusal Blade from Naga Siren. I think it's like the first Diffusal, it's his second Diffusal Blade charge he's used. That's how ineffective this Naga Siren has been. They just can't find an opening to push with, and Invoker going down, I think his buyback is on cooldown for a bit. Can they use this to push? I don't know. They've only got this mid lane alive. They're going to smoke immediately, look to make something happen, but the problem is going to be, look at this. Morphling, Illusions popped. Ooh, he reveals them. They know what's coming. They should know what's coming. Maybe they think someone's in this, but no. Morphling just gonna go right on in. The creep wave is not quite in. It will be in very, very soon. Illusions. Oh, no, no backdoor protection. It looks like the creeps were must have been in previously and have not caused the backdoor protection to come back in. Morphling at top. The three. Invasion right here is at mid. They get a pick off. They're gonna have to go all in. They're gonna have to go for a throwing race here. That's their only option here. Morphling will see a throwing race. Can Invasion Red win this? I really don't think so. We're gonna have Naga Siren try stall. Stall the Morphling while Lone Druid goes for the Sentinel Throne. Or actually he's going to go for the Sentinel Bottom Racks. But we are going to see Morphling maybe get some Mega Creeps in. Morphling is just trying to throw in this. Naga Siren is there an ultimate up. He's going to have to maybe pop this. It is up. And Morphling takes out FCFC. Tide Ravage goes. And oh man. This is not looking good for Invasion Red. Right click away on the throne. Waves over. He's still right clicking on the throne. It looks like Glyph wasn't back pop. We'll see the Naga Siren ultimate being popped if needed. He's morphing the street, keeping himself alive as long as possible. Here come the TPs. Is Naga Siren going to have to pop an ultimate? There's a lone druid looking for it. The throne. It goes down. Naga Siren doesn't pop the ultimate. And they, they, Mineski win. Mineski have done it. Tawala Lengsa Mineski. They have done it. They have held. Trust in Mineski to all you fans. What a crazy ending. That was not quite the ending I expected, but what an ending it was. Maneski come out on top. They are your third place winner here in the GESC IDC June. And with that, guys, we are going to go on to the grand finals. And what a what a, what a playoffs it has been, guys. We're going to have a best of three between Bad Burn and iZone. We're not done. We've got plenty more action to come as we're going to be getting into that grand finals as soon as those teams are ready. I believe it's scheduled for 6 p.m., which is in five minutes' time, or for all you people in Singapore, Philippines, etc. That's 7 p.m. your time, so we're actually on schedule. We're going to get right into that game, uh, and hopefully in the next 5, 10 minutes, guys. But anyways, we're going to do a quick break. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. I'm Gods from Ghost Gamers. You can find me on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. That's over there, there, there. We'll be uploading all of the VODs on YouTube later on, not to mention you can follow me on Facebook to know when I'm streaming, when there are updates for GST and on Twitter as well. I will update on there when I do start streaming. So anyways, guys, we're going to do a quick break. We'll be back soon.